Well, g'day there. Welcome to this Mark's Reviews Tutorials video. We're going to be talking today about adding um, spa suctions into a spa. Now, you might be replacing like a smaller spa suction, what's down there, um, the, the white one there, or in this case, we're putting another boost pump on. We're leaving the circulation pump going through the skimmer and that suction. We're putting on another boost pump. So we need two of these. You always need these to operate in pairs for safety reasons, so hair can't get trapped down and block it up. So we're gonna be putting one on this side and they need to be 600 apart by Australian standards. Check in your country. Uh, and we're gonna be putting one over here. So it's not only a matter of finding a piece of flat plastic that's 600 apart inside the spa and you put it down in the footwell too. You don't wanna put it up here where someone's gonna put their back on it or something like that. Um, but you've also gotta have a look under the spa to see what's going on. So we are, there's a suction there and then the light and we're looking at going sort of just down below the light. So you need to come down underneath and see what's going on. Is there room to run plumbing uh, and what's going on there? You can see the light, it's glowing red there as the sun shining on it. And basically where we're talking, there's a heap of tubes running past. Now they've got a bit of play in them so we can push them up a bit and down a bit. We certainly have to get them out of the way when we drill the hole and drill it, but we'll be able to get the plumbing past there. Worst case scenario, we could cut those and lengthen them. But uh, in this case, they'll be able to just push up out of the way. So we're going to push those ones out of the way. And I'll take a paddle off on the other side and we'll have a look at where we're planning to put the other fitting. So down under this side, where we're planning to put these fittings, there's those jets off to the side. And then there's an area uh, just here. That's where that's going to be. Those pipes that you can see are, are a fair way back from the spa, so they're not in the way. So we can get the fitting on. We'll be able to get a fitting out of it and uh, run back over this way to where the new pump's going. So that'll work fine. I might start with this one. We'll drill through and get a fitting in, and uh, then we'll go to the other one over there. We, okay, so we're getting ready to mount this. And the real big important thing is that you get an area flat enough. These are, these are big. Um, so when you get them in, you've got to be able to seal them. And uh, so you've got to get a, a piece of acrylic that's flat. You can't go and mount it on a bendy part like that. It just won't seal. So you have to get a flat bit and mount it in the flat section. Okay, so we've made a start. And the thing is when you're drilling a big circular hole like this, you can just move the drill around like that. So it's sort of cutting and pressurizing in different spots. You can see how that's how far we are in so far. And the center hole holds it in place. There we go. And we're through got ourselves a hole hole and it's the right size for that fitting as you can see it these are foot spots where you have four jets for his foot would have been nice to get away from that a little bit but the curve is right here so i had to keep the suction away from the curve otherwise it wouldn't sit flash flush like it is there and seal up nicely and now we'll drill the other one over here Got a bit of foam behind them so there's a bit of body now so the drill and circular saw won't hit them i've also lifted them up so then when i come down a bit lower down about here uh, hopefully we're not going to nick or cut any of those lines so now the holes are through and the next stage is to break away a little bit of foam so that we're not sealing onto the foam but actually sealing onto the spar now in actual fact the suction seals on the other side there shouldn't be any water leaking through at all but it's just a secondary if you can get that foam off and get up a bit of a seal on the locking nut as well it just helps to keep the water in the spa which is where we want it so we'll just knock that foam off uh, on both the holes just so you can see what i mean by that i've knocked the um, foam off so that when we put that fitting through we'll put silicon on the back of the suction on the inside of the spa and press it in so it seals on that face and that'll sort of tend to come through here then once the fitting's in i'll put a bead um, around the inside edge so if there's any gap there and then when the lock nut comes in and it'll seal on that as well just giving it all a big seal and then we'll pull it up nice and tight and the silicon will take up all the gaps they don't actually supply um, washers with these no rubber washers or anything like that and when you're using silicon it does actually tend to make the rubber washers pop out so they can be more nuisance than good uh, you can get like soft plastic washers that don't pop out um, so if you've got a bit of a curve or something like that you want to take out they can help but normally even with a little bit of a curve silicon is enough get it into a flat if you can but silicon will take up a little bit of a curve and a bit of shape uh, in it as well okay so the next uh, stage you just got to make sure there's no burrs left on here or on the back and also um, give it a wipe so as to get any foam like you scraped it with a screwdriver but if you can get in there with a towel you find there's a lot more little bits of insulation will come off 
which will give you a much better sealing surface uh, back onto the fiberglass on the back of the shell. So give it all a wipe. I'm gonna wipe all this down. I'm gonna get this last little bit of water. I'm gonna silicon, so I don't want mess in here. So I'm gonna get all of the mess from the drill. This water that came in from a rainstorm, get it all out, get it all clean, and then we'll start the siliconing. So we've got it all clean. And now what you do is phone a friend, get a friend, cause you're gonna need someone inside holding these in place while someone else is on the outside um, screwing the lock nut in. So you can't do this one by yourself. So grab a friend time. Okay, go. So in comes the fitting. Just like that. And you can see the silicon sort of sitting nicely all the way around it. I'm actually, because it's very hard to get in there and reach, I'm not going to be able to get the silicon gun in. So I'm going to put a smear of silicon around the face of the lock nut, then take the lock nut under and screw it in. Try not to get it on the thread. So it makes it really tight and it's just a pain. Okay, so the lock nuts are on now. As you can see, they're done up nice and tight. You don't need to tool them up tight. You're just gonna squash all the silicon out if you do that. But just do them up really, really firmly hand tight. Make sure there's no wobble or play. Uh, and then that's ready for the plumbing. Placement of these suctions. Um, I only had one spot that there was, there was not enough room down the side over there to put it. So it's the only place I could get them 600 mil apart was where I've put them. And the other one, you can see with the air lines, this one's got water lines. And again, because this bar's old, those water lines have gone hard as a rock. They won't flex out of the way. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut them um, up at this sort of level, up here, cut them both through, and just bend them down out of the way, and then put a little joiner in, because um, they're tight, tight um, through to the manifold. And that way I'll be able to get the plumbing in uh, and connect this suction up. So it's a bit of mucking around, but it's what's required. The thing to do, I mean, you probably should do this before you even start this job, is to work out where you're gonna put the motors and pumps. I was thinking I'd be able to fit them both over there, but it's just not gonna work, because it's not only the size of the motor that needs to fit in, but it's also the plumbing to and from it, if you've gotta be able to fit, particularly um, boost pumps with 50 mil pipes. They do take up a lot of room. You can spin these pumps. I've got this one unbolted, so you can have it either discharging up or discharging across. Have a look at this video up here. It shows you how to do that. Um, but basically I've had to move, the spar blower was along here, sitting where the motor is, and uh, I've moved it around and across, getting it right up to the edge there, and just remounted it into where it was, uh, making room for this guy here. So this is where the um, one of the suctions is, just over there. This is actually the return line that this pump needs to plug into, so that's super close. And the suctions will come out and come back to a T, one running back to this one and the one around the corner. So that'll work really well. And the circuit pump fittings are all over here. We'll Looking from the back. From the back, this is the suction line that's gonna come into the circ pump. So you can see it's right in front of the circ pump here. And this here um, is gonna come up and across and then straight in. I've already got, using the old fittings, that's already comes out and goes up. So that'll match in and go into it perfectly and through the controller. So that's a much better setup, lots of room for everything. And uh, that's it. So it's time for an upstate with the um, plumbing installed. You can see here, we've got the suction plumbed in uh, on the side of that valve. I've just reduced it straight from 50 to 40. This is just a circ pump only now, so it doesn't have to be 50 mil pipe. In here with 40, back out with 40, then another 40 by 50 reducer there going into the old plumbing across the front of the controller and then out the other side and then that just goes up to a jet that's right here so then the the big suction is here which is coming off with a 90 and then coming around uh, the flexible pipe is just brilliant for getting in a shape like that and the fitting you can see at the back there is the t so there's the t from this side and again around we've come up here we've got a 45 going down to a 90 um, where that then goes into the suction you can see that there's all sorts of feeling to get around those hoses as you can see um, but it's just a matter of taking the time to get that done and now we're just going to plumb uh, the discharge out to that pipe there in front and the suction is going to go around to that T piece so there we go the last bit's done now that motor is in we've got a suction coming from the T into the front the T which goes to the two suctions that we put into the spar and then there's the return this um double elbow setup i've got here 
is a great way to, when you've got really weird angles, um, to get them to line up. So did all of that in rigid pipe because there was enough flex in this pipe back here that I can get this on and off, no worries. And again, there's flex in the um, ring that goes around, which will enable me to get this on and off. When you've got motors in tight situations, you gotta make sure that you've got enough flex to actually unscrew the fitting and be able to get the motor out. But this one's really easy and gonna be easy to get out.